Now, you won't believe what Eric Ten Hag said about the Manchester United players. Well, actually, you probably will believe it because we've all seen it on the pitch. But leaks have come out about things Eric Ten Hag has said about his players being mentally fragile, how he can't criticise them and the poor mentality of the players. There's also some positive news coming out on Kobe Maino could be available for selection ahead of of the weekend. There's some more news on Jaden Sancho yet again, refusing to apologise and the hierarchy of a meeting about Ten Hag's future, which is looking positive for Ten Hag and more. So hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and welcome back to your Manchester United news roundup. So we're going to start with this first story, which is an interesting story, which is basically some things apparently about the United squad that Ten Hag said. The first part of the story said this. Sources close to Ten Hag say he doesn't feel he can be as harsh in his criticism of the Man United players as he'd like to because there's concerns about the mental fragility of the squad. Absolutely embarrassing. And I believe that this is 100% true because we've seen it. Sancho gets dropped, he gets disciplined, he gets criticised. Now he's refusing to play, train, do anything, apologise. He's acting like a baby. Cristiano Ronaldo, two years ago, when, when Ragnit was here before he left United, was asked about United players. And he said that certain United players, particularly the younger ones, couldn't take criticism. They got offended and they, they turned on him. Ronaldo said back in the day when he was a footballer, you know, Roy Keane, Gary Neville, they used to criticise him when he was an 18-year-old kid. And Ronaldo was like, OK, they told me to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to listen to the Roy Keans because they're at the top now. la di -da. So when they criticised Ronaldo as a kid, he listened to them because they were already top players. And he took that constructive criticism. Ronaldo said when he used to criticise the younger players at Man United, tell them to work harder you know, question their mentality, question their work rate. They used to turn on them and get angry at him. I mean, who are you? You you know, imagine Jaden Sancho being told by Ronaldo to do this, that and work harder. And instead he's getting annoyed at, at Ronaldo for telling him what to do. He's, you look at it and you think, really? It's Cristiano Ronaldo. But that story doesn't believe me at all. That, that story, I, I believe completely. Do you know why? Because that everything about this United team, these players, when they get criticised, they cry like babies. Even Maguire putting his fingers in his ears because he scores versus Albania and saying he doesn't need to prove himself. I feel like a lot of our players have bigged themselves up and because they're on big wages, they think they're a lot better than they actually are. So as soon as someone actually criticises them and tells them, actually, you're not as good as you think you are, they act like babies. And I think that's why they've turned on previous managers. The second part of the story is even more interesting. It said Eric Ten Hag has raised the issue of having the right body language when setbacks happen in games and is increasingly frustrated that his message isn't getting through to particular members of the squad. And this is something I brought in my five things we learned. I said the body language of the Manchester United players is awful. I said the fact that you can see them give up. We'll have a really good 20 minutes and then we'll concede a goal. We'll go one nil down and they give up. It's like they don't believe in themselves. Their body language, they stop fighting because they've gone 1-0 down. Oh, you know, we had a good 20 minutes. We've gone 1-0 down. We're going to lose another game. Like, the mentality of these players is worrying. And I said this in my five things we learned. I think the biggest problem at United is there's a mentality issue right now with the players. As soon as we go a goal down, they give up. They're not there mentally. They've checked out from the season. They don't have belief. And Ten Hag's job is to get that belief back in them. But we had so much belief last season, fighting to the end. And now... It's like we always find a way to lose. And the body language when we have a setback in games is embarrassing. The lapse of concentration is embarrassing. And Ten Hag has been speaking to members of the squad about this. And it's just not getting through to them. You know, these players, I don't know what it is, but they just don't believe in themselves. Maybe there's a confidence issue. I don't know. But when, you know, Newcastle, they lost three games in a row. You know, Brighton, Liverpool, City, they lost three games in a row. And people were like, oh, this this Newcastle squad's been exposed. la -di da What have Newcastle done since? Won 8-0 against Sheffield United, 0-0 at San Siro, beat Brentford, beat Berlin, just absolutely smashed PSG. We lose three games in a row and our players mentally check out and think the season's over. Newcastle lose three games in a row, but that, that's fine for them because, you know, they believe in themselves. They don't think their season's over because they've lost three games in a row and mentally check out. They fight back. But when we go a goal down, we, we're just absolute babies. And I can't stand it. And Ten Hag's right. What, what is this body language? What is this work rate? What is this mentality? Do you know what it is? It's weak. 
And to be honest, I think the season is over now because I think the season is over because those players decided after we lost two games, the season was over and they weren't going to try. and They've mentally checked out from the season. I think there's time to turn things around. I mean, we are still in all the cup competitions. We can still get out of Champions League group. In fact, we can still top our Champions League group. But again, I think our players have just completely and utterly mentally checked out for the season. I think we won't turn things around because I think those players have already decided the season is over. And I feel sorry for Tenog. I feel like it's going to be a very bad season. And I think those players aren't going to give him what he wants to succeed. Because I still back the manager. I still back Tenog. I think there's things he needs to change. But I know that changing the manager isn't going to solve the wider problems. We've got so many problems at this club. And it was said that Man United respect the fact that Eric Tenog has not gone looking for excuses, even though he has 16 players ruled out at various times through injury since pre-season. We've had 16 players ruled out. And this is where I have a bit of sympathy for Tenog because he needs to do better. We need to be playing better. We need to get better results. But the amount of injuries we've had on top of the Sancho situation, on top of the Anthony situation, it's not been easy for Ten Hag. And it's not been easy to get a consistent run of games going, momentum going when he can't start his strongest lineup. And I have to say one thing that I would give Ten Hag is we should have signed a centre-back. It's come out now from Chris Wheeler that Eric Ten Hag wants to sign a centre-back in January. And I don't blame Eric Ten Hag for wanting to sign a centre-back in January, but we should have signed a centre-back in the summer. You know, the, positionally, everything defensively is, is awful at the moment. Amrabat's not a left back. He's playing people on side. He's getting caught out of position. We need one of our left backs to be fit. You know, Lindelof's been pushed off the ball. He's been really, really poor. You know, if Martinez, Wan-Bissaka and Luke Shaw had played versus Galatasaray, there's no way we lose that game. There's no way we can see three goals. We scored five goals in our last two Champions League games. Um, and we lost both because we were conceding the, the silliest goals from midfielders losing runners to players being left unmarked to defenders being pushed off the ball. And Eric Ten Hag's not had much help with injuries. And I think the defensive injuries have massively caused us problems. You look at the defence. I see people blaming Anana. Yes, Anana's at fault for one of the goals. But actually, you know, the defence has been awful. And I feel I feel sorry for Ten Hag because I think the players have got the complete wrong mentality. A lot of his main players are injured. And just hope he gets the time to turn things around. And it is said that the board are willing to give Eric Ten Hag time to turn it around because they know he's had to deal with a lot of issues, a lot of players injured. But I think the main reason they'll give Eric Ten Hag time isn't because it's the right thing to do. It's because they can't afford to sack him. I think it's the right thing to do to give Eric Ten Hag time because I don't think it's his fault that we've got players with big egos who can't take criticism, who are mentally fragile. But I think the reason they won't sack Ten Hag is because they don't want to spend the money to sack Ten Hag. Um, that I reckon that's what the truth is, which probably is a blessing in disguise. I think back in the manager, giving him a few years out, even when it got bad at Arsenal with Arteta, it's now good at Arsenal. I think that Eric Ten Hag, because at United, a rebuild is 10 times slower than any other club because he's only allowed about three signings a season. But I think if Eric Ten Hag can get the wrong, the wrong attitudes out of the club, keep the right mentalities here, is it allowed players that he wants in, had the support of the board and the people around him, which is never going to happen, I think that he can definitely succeed. I've always said this, if we have a proper footballing structure around Eric Ten Hag, I think he can succeed. You look at Newcastle, two two and a bit years ago, they looked like they were going to get relegated. They're now thrashing PSG in the Champions League. That's what good ownership does. That's what ambitious ownership does. You know, our owners taking over a billion out of the club. It, it's absolutely embarrassing. And you know what else is absolutely embarrassing? Jaden Sancho. Just apologise to the manager, like even if you don't mean it. The fact that he is being this stubborn, he'll train on his own when we're struggling, when we need a right winger, when we could have used him just to get back at the manager. And people are saying, oh, you know, maybe Sancho is going to outlive Ten Hag at United now and all of this and all of that. But even if he does, I don't want Sancho playing. I want Sancho playing in terms of I think we needed him on the right wing, but I don't want him playing if he's going to refuse to apologise and act like this, even if Ten Hag does go, because he's shown his true colours. You know, I get that you feel you were wrongly done by the manager, and I understand that. But to refuse to, tr- you know, train, play, um, well, obviously he's training in exile. After all this time when we could need you, when we're losing games, when we need help on the right wing and you're not, for me, it's embarrassing. At the end of the day, I don't care that you've fallen out with Ten Hag or not. You're employed by this club. You're on £350,000 a week employed by this club. The amount of people that go to their jobs and don't get on with their manager and fall out with their manager, but they still have to go to their jobs and work under their manager because they, they won't get paid. They'll get sacked otherwise. But you think just because you've had a squabble with your manager, you can have this big public spat with him. I think it's embarrassing. I think if Jaden Sancho should have apologised weeks ago. He should have got over, over it, even if he didn't mean it, and come back to training. 
because I think it's a professional to basically refuse to apologise to the manager, literally just happily do nothing until January. It makes me sad because I like Sancho. I think there's a good player in there. But I think his attitude is shown through now. And I'm at the point where even if he does apologise, I don't know if I want him back. His attitude is completely shown through. And I think, you know, for me, that is embarrassing to happily not train for four or five months just because you don't want to apologise to a manager. That is a new level of stubborn. And the only good thing to come out of this is that it sends a message to the rest of the squad. The only good thing to come out of this is that Manchester United players might go now, hmm, Ten Hag, if you, if you, if you disrespect him, if you don't, if you don't do this, you don't do that. You know, you do get punished. And maybe this will give a message to the rest of the Man United squad that they need to start giving hundred percent or doing this or doing that. Maybe it will give a message over. But anyway, that is a summary of all sort of the Manchester United news and stories. So in summary, basically, Ten Hag's job is safe, which is good. Um, Ten Hag wants a new centre back, which I don't think he'll get because I don't think we'll spend the money. But Ten Hag is questioning the mentality of his players, why he can't criticise them and their body language, which he has every right to question, on top of obviously the 16 injuries that we've had since pre-season, which Ten Hag isn't using as an excuse. But when you do look at it, you know, while I am critical of some of the things Ten Hag's done, he can't really help the fact that 16 players have got injured. And I do think once players return from injuries, Man United will look a lot better, despite the players already mentally checking out for the season. Guys, please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Share the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.